All right, well, aloha and good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Um, we'd like to get this meeting started. So, Eunice, could you please start the transcription on online, too? Uh, for this um, meeting, we will have both some in-person presentations and participation, and also our virtual online uh, participants. Um, and we're going to start with just a few general pieces of business. Um, so this is the City and County of Honolulu Source Reduction Working Group meeting number five. This will be the final meeting for this working group. And today our meeting will be done both in person and um, online. I'm going to be the main facilitator. My name is Lindsay Lopez, and I'm joined here by my great colleagues, John Padre and Emily Stone, that are in the room here. And also we have Eunice Chan, who is our virtual facilitator, and so both uh, Eunice or I can try to help with any issues that come up, and um, we're really looking forward to everyone's uh, participation. So the date is May 10th. 2024. Uh, please put your phones and microphones on silent. For those in the room, restrooms are located down the hall and to the right, and we are recording the meeting for keeping uh, note-keeping purposes. And so I call this meeting to order. Emily, could you please call, uh, do roll call? Yes. Amy Cook. Here. Gwen Mitton. Here. Alan Evans. Tina Yamaki. Lauren Zerbel. Amy Breaker. Here. Lene Ichino Subo. Here. Mike O'Keefe. Here. Nicole Chatterson. Here. We have a quorum. Mahalo for attending today. Um, can you let the record show that we have... Uh, Eunice, would you mind reading out the virtual attendees, please? Our virtual attendees are uh, Amy Brinker, uh, Amy Cook, um, Nicole Chatterson, and Quinn Bittum. And our in-person participants are Michael Keith and Lene Ichikosugu. All right. Well, it is a pleasure to be back in person for this final Source Reduction Working Group uh, meeting, and it's been a real honor to be part of this whole process. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to discuss and help the future of source reduction for the island. And I look forward to seeing all the great activities and progress that you make in the future. So let's take a quick look at our agenda. Um, it is relatively few items on the agenda, um, but we will next after this be looking through meeting number four minutes um, and seeing if anyone has comments. We will then move to discussion of the Source Reduction Working Group final report, and in that part we'll, we're looking to hear, um, we'll go through each of the comments and markups, and the goal of that is to all come to some sort of resolution on path forward so that in the next agenda item we can actually um, have approval of that report, which is the goal, and then the meeting will be adjourned. All right. So we will now move to the agenda item for approval of minutes from the Source Reduction Working Group meeting number four. This is both an informational and an actional element and um, the meeting minutes were posted in the meeting packet for meeting number five at the project website. In this agenda item, we'd like to explore if changes are necessary or if we can approve the minutes. I'd like to move to public testimony. Um, is there anyone that has been registered in the room or virtually that would like to speak about the meeting number four minutes? Hello, Councilor Mr. Johnson. Oh, no one has registered. No one has registered. 
So we're the Come Live team. Yeah. We are. Hello, everybody. Hello, so, welcome. We're Miss Alyssa Stone. Oh, where are you? Looks like this. One second. Total survival. Sure. Okay, before we jump into this public testimony, we are going to invite our speaker to have a few words. <laughs> that mean? Yeah, how do you? Yeah, okay, well, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? So their microphone is right here, so you can come up and just introduce yourself yeah, for those who are unfamiliar with who you are. <laughs> And say a few words. Welcome. Where, where, where's the camera? Oh. Do I have to, to pick it up? Here. Oh. Behind you. Yeah, well, this is kind of interesting. Okay, well, on behalf of the city and county of Honolulu, okay, first of all, my name is Chris Hirota. I'm the acting chief of the Refuse Division with the Department of Environmental Services. And um, I just really wanted to thank everybody, the participants, um, also the people who provided commentary, and of course, our consultant, um, Jacobs for a job well done with this source reduction workshop. And, um, you know, we're hoping that from this um, we call it exercise, we come up with a lot of solutions for reducing the island's waste and helping to keep Oahu a you know, cleaner, safer place. And that's all, I mean, unless we have any other things we wanna go over. No, thank you so okay, much. Okay, well, again, thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, let's uh, return back to the public testimony. It doesn't look like we have anyone signed up, so we'll move. No, oh, Lindsay, it can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me now. One second. Um, it's still no sound. I'm sorry if I did something. Can you hear us now? Okay, it's back. You can hear us now? Yeah. Were, were you able to hear the, la the last speech? So thank you. Yes, it was after the microphone was set down. Okay. Perfect. I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Thanks so much. Oh. All right, Eunice, is there anyone from the video conference that would like to speak? Um, if, if you would like to speak, you can uh, raise your hand. There's a raise hand button, or you can, um, or you can let me know in the chat. So members, you had the chance to take a look at meeting number four minutes, and um, I did not receive any comments back from you, but I just want to uh, make sure that you don't have any comments that we need to make changes, and then we can finalize those minutes. Would anyone have any comments in the room? No? Anyone online have any comments? Um, I don't see any raised hands or uh, anything in the Okay. Then can I get a member to make a motion for approval of meeting four minutes? I move to approve meeting four minutes. Can I get this a second? Call. Second that, Quinn. All members in favor of approving the minutes from meeting number four say aye. And if you're online, please raise your hand with the use your hand, raise your hand motion. Hi. So online, the raised hands are Nicole, Amy, Haley, and Quinn. And in the room, Mike said I and Lene both said I. All right, thank you all. That brings us to the next section, and this is discussion of the Source Reduction Working Group final report. Um, I'm going to be moving uh, out of the slides and we're going to start actually looking at the um, the actual report um, but following completion of meeting number four 
the draft final report was prepared and posted for comment on the Source Reduction Working Group website. Each Source Reduction Working Group member reviewed the report and provided feedback. So thank you all for your time and participation in this review process. Some members had no comments. We also received individual letters from three of the members to be included within the report. And so today, the goal is to run through the report section by section. I have all the sections listed here. Uh, review the comments that were received, discuss and determine a path forward for each comment. And the hope again is trying to come to some resolution so that we can approve the final report at the end uh, in the next agenda item. Um, so, I'm going to get the report up. And again, um, we're gonna go section by section. And this is the Word document, so it doesn't have the fancy, um, here I'll show you in just a second. The actual draft cover, if you remember, looks like this. And we did note that we used an older version of the seal. When, are you sharing screen? I should be, and why not? Okay, hold on. And just a, just a quick question, the current version that you're going to share today is, is that going to be version 4? So it's not linked on the website as of yet, correct? That is correct. Okay. Sorry, I got dropped, so I wasn't sharing. Um, one second. Looks like it's trying to connect. Is there also a way to just um, to share a link to this version for, just in case there's like delays or the lag in the way the screen share goes as we move along here? Um, possibly, yes, but I'm gonna have to get it to everybody and I, since I don't have, <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna try the other one and see if that works. We've got a couple of. Cool. Lindsay Lauren just joined. Hi, Hi Lauren, guys. welcome. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, we are on the fourth agenda item, having just a tiny bit of internet connectivity problems here, but um, I hope to be back on track very soon. Um, Z, would you like me to share screen too? I have version four up. You know, Eunice, I've made a few more changes, so hopefully okay. not, but um, let me send this to you right away and that way. We don't have that problem again. Okay. Let's try this again. Are you seeing my screen yet? Looks like it. Okay. All right. So starting over, apologies for that. Um, this is the cover that you all saw and the screen, the seal has an old seal. So we're going to be replacing that with the latest one, which is very similar, but it has green mountains in it. But other than that, I think that we are keeping the rest of this um, cover page as is. And then we'll just go back over to the Word file. I just need to do some updating of the titles because of this is the final. It's no longer the draft final and the version numbers. Pretty easy stuff. All right, so then the next piece here, um, there were a number of comments that made some suggestions for different titles to some of the actions. And so um, what I recommend is that we just agree to come back to this section, I will at the end of the meeting and document the final names that we decide upon in the, as we get to the main body of the report. It's probably an easier time to talk about this. This is just the executive summary portion. 
but we'll make sure that all of the action titles that got updated match the list that's in the executive summary. And then um, we will make sure that it gets carried out throughout. So that's um, one thing that to show on this. And then there, there was one comment here about um, for the permitting process for CMD material management for reuse, what kind of permits does this refer to? And um, when we were talking about this kind of streamlining the permitting process, it was the process for CMD and concrete waste recyclers. And there was a, a barrier for uh, setting up new facilities that would do this kind of work. And so it was streamlining that permitting process to try to help make it easier for a new CND recycler uh, or concrete recycler to get within the market. So that was the, the concept behind that. Um, so if we need to do some further explanation of that later on when we actually talk about that action, we can circle back to that. I just wanted to answer that question. And again, we'll, we'll sort out what the final title is as we proceed. So I don't see any additional comments in the acknowledgments page. And the contents didn't have any changes, but it'll be updated so that all of the numbers are correct once we make the final changes. And any other changes that just change the titles will be updated as well. see any changes to the acronyms and abbreviations, so we'll leave those as is. And the introduction, um, there were no changes to the introduction itself. Under background, we did have a couple of different comments um, related to some of the topics. So there was these red line changes here that are shown on the screen. So in the, the new text for the legislative level would read, Honolulu City Council passed Bill 40, now revised ordinance of Honolulu ROH Chapter 34, Article 13, the disposable food waste ordinance, which promotes source reduction, prohibiting the sale and provision of disposable plastic and polystyrene food and service ware for prepared foods. Does anyone have any issue with this change? If you do, I do see Amy's hand. Is that from a previous hand or did you have a question? <coughs> that was a previous one, but I do wonder if we can link to the HRS statutes whenever they come up or the bill, you know. Yes. Or in this case, revised ordinance, but throughout the document. Okay. There, and most of them that there should have been, but that is something we will make sure that is linked to it. Uh, Nicole, has your hand up. Nicole? Yeah, I'm, I think it sounds great. I'm just wondering what the spirit of the change is. Is it intended to more directly in line with align with what the statute language says or is what was the reason for changing it so this was one of the markups that I received um, I don't have the context here but I think it was to try to be more representative of what the statute says perhaps yeah Lindsay I can jump in this was for me I was just to make it um, accurate for what the, oh. yeah, the reference is. Awesome. That was what I was hoping to hear, so sounds great. Thank you. Um, so then there was two other comments on this page, and I'm going to read them. They're a little long, but um, that way everyone can hear. So um, this was in, in related to just this legislative level idea, and again, these are examples of source reduction at various levels and they were ways source reduction can happen. So the manufacturing level, legislative level, 
industrial or business level and to consumer level. And so this first comment says, note that the unintended consequence is that many restaurants closed down as the replacement for the disposable foodware was um, at time double and triple the price of polystyrene wear and there were limited vendors. Ordering online is not always an option for business as it's not a steady or reliable source. Businesses could not afford the added expense. Businesses respond to the wants of the customers that patronize their establishments, all while operating on a very thin mar profit margin. They look for cost-effective food containers and utensils that ensure that products are durable enough to protect people from the spills and burns, as well as keep food protected and fresh longer by sustaining appropriate temperatures. We also look for cost-effective products that protect items from breakage and present appetizing products. So I have a proposed response that this portion is intended to just provide examples of different source reduction pathways. Um, and I want to see if you all feel like we need to add additional context. We could add a, fo a footnote. One potential footnote would be that the retail merchants of Hawaii would like to raise concern for unintended consequences of actions that raise costs to businesses. How are people feeling about whether a change is needed, perhaps a footnote, perhaps no change? Any thoughts? I think for what this section is intending to do, it doesn't seem necessary to include a footnote. Yeah. And if there was major concern for stating that perspective, it might fit better elsewhere where we dig into the topic a little more. Um, but it could also ha work well in, in a personal statement from an organization as well. That, and that is a really good point, too, is that um, this uh, they did send in a personal statement, and I do think that their viewpoints are nicely represented in that letter. So. That's another option too. Is there anyone opposed to not making an additional change? The other option you mentioned was to put it in the body of the report. Is there a space that you had in mind? Um, so none of the actions that we proposed were talking about this bill because it's something that's already happened, but perhaps when we are talking about um, you know, some of the changes to the food packaging. It could be in perhaps the introduction portion of, of that section. Um, it could be in the portions that are talking about impacts to each of the actions, potentially. Nicole? I would then wonder how far down the rabbit hole we go of qualifying everything we've said with additional concerns um, and what that would sort of look like for creating a comprehensible report. Um, I think I will now advocate for if it's already, if, if the concerns are already addressed elsewhere in a organization's statement, we just that and I, I can pull up their statement if everyone, because eventually we are going to look at them. Um, so let's see here. Maybe while you're doing that, Lindsay, I'll, I'll second Nicole's um, comment. I mean, it's um, if we had to, if we did this for, I mean, there, there's you know consequences to everything that we're talking about here, and there's opinions and positions um, Absolutely. if we had to do that for everything and that that's fine but I don't think that's what the report is designed to do or accommodate even um, yeah if, if one member has a, has has you know wants to share something I think the, the, the statement at the end as an appendix to the report is probably the best opportunity to do that okay here here is their their statement um, 
It has been an honor to be a member of this Worst Reduction Working Group regarding the pressing issue of waste management and environmental conservation within our city and county of Honolulu. Retail merchants of Hawaii continue to be concerned about our Aina and have supported many initiatives that preserve and protect our environment. Retailers are supportive of the recycling initiatives that are reasonable. We seek to find a balance that will not only be beneficial to the environment, but also not place undue burden on businesses in the community that would make Hawaii an even more expensive place to live. As an active participant in the Source Reduction Working Group, we understand firsthand our environment and community well-being. This group has been dedicated to finding sustainable solutions to mitigate impacts and promote culture of source reduction and waste minimization. We believe that effective waste management begins with identifying a variety of source reduction strategies in addition to understanding the overall and comprehensive effect these strategies have, not only on the environment, but the community, the cost factors, infrastructure, and the limitations of being an island state. As always, we look forward to continuing working with your administration on these matters as together we can make a significant impact in preserving our environment and building a more resilient community. So with that, I, I do think that their position is uh, represented. Um, so for both this comment and the next one, which is similar, which talks about the unintended consequence of the bag ban, which um, is, uh, according to this commenter, it increased shoplifting. Um, so I do think that this, those are very specific details, and since we aren't proposing to change the bag ban or the um, current food-based bill or ordinance, then perhaps just the overall balance of having things happen and knowing what the consequences are represented in the letter. So if anyone has any uh, additional worries or concerns about that, uh, we can talk about it again at the end as we're getting closer to approving the report, but I think it's probably a good place to keep moving along. So next section is, why is source reduction important? Um, we did have kind of a clarification a little bit about what source reduction focuses on and how it's the prevention of waste upstream of disposal and it's the preferred strategy for maintaining solid waste management. It doesn't change what was said here, it's just a slightly different, more clear version of how to say it. So I'm going to keep going, but if you have any concerns... So, uh, so wait. Um, yes. It says above disposal, but it's actually above recycling also. So do we want to make that distinction? It tr true, it's above disposal, but it's also above recycling. Sure. I think that's a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. Upstream of recycling and disposal. Mm -hmm. Did I hear someone join? Uh, I think maybe Nicole on a different device, or? No, nah, I just accidentally closed the browser, so I'm back. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then there was um, some other minor text edits here in this paragraph. On the next page, um, there was a suggestion to add and quantities after types, since this is talking about the 2017 waste composition study. It provided information about the types and quantities of material present in the waste stream, um, and then another text edit, and then as well as information on recycling. So that was just an additional piece of information added. In the next paragraph, under the figure two, uh, there was a couple of word suggestion changes from resources to programs, and then trying to clarify the plan we were talking about was specifically the integrated salt waste management plan. There is a comment here. So at the end of this paragraph, 
it says additional links to background information, background information such as the 2019 integrated solid waste management plan update, the 2017 composition study, and other information on source reduction are provided in Appendix F. Someone deleted that. Is there a reason, or was that a maybe a rogue deletion? While you're looking that up, I would just suggest that we don't delete it because it is introducing the Appendix F, and there are a bunch of links there that have all of these different reports um, in it, and I think it would be important to, to keep those there. They're helpful to the overall report. This statement here that you can see my highlights that was deleted. Maybe that was a hard deletion. I apologize. No worries. It's easy, and you never know with Acrobat. It, sometimes different versions don't translate over. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. All right. So we'll keep that in. So that brings us now to section three: the purpose of the source reduction working group. And we didn't see any text changes to the introduction part. Under 3.2, we have just some minor word suggested changes here. Now it will read the source reduction working group convenes representatives. And then there was a comment at this final paragraph here um, to be revised to make it a little bit more clear about what we're actually talking about and what the goal is. And so I made a proposed uh, revision to that. Um, achieving more source reduction for Oahu will require ongoing discussions and coordination that extends beyond the one year appointed term for the SRWG and will require the participation and support by many additional stakeholders. Uh, source reduction work, working group members are encouraged to stay involved in efforts to drive more source reduction for the island. Does that change, address the concern that that paragraph was not clear, Mike? Yes. I think so, yeah. I don't want to hold up people, but maybe, yeah, maybe we can just move on. Okay. Um, we can come back to it if digest it's it a little bit, yeah. something we want to tweak a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now that brings us to section four, which was the methodology. Uh, one, the word eventually was struck. Not just but was reduced. And then under the members table for the footnote for Jessica Leorna, it is now been changed to state, was unable to participate in the source reduction working group process after source reduction working group meeting number three. Just wanted to make sure it was more clear that um, she wasn't taken out of the committee, it just she was not able to participate for there. For FRC purposes, can you just remove my title? Because I'm actually rotating, so I'm currently I'm not acting manager or chief. Yes. Just remove it? Yeah. Your many hats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. All right, that brings us to uh, 4.2. And this is the process. There, um, I, I changed this to be more accurate because this was held between April 2023 and May 2024. So those dates have been added. 
and the addition of in accordance with Sunshine Law was also added to be clear that we did follow the Sunshine Law protocol. And then this next paragraph has a couple of changes um, to clarify just the intent of the messaging here. I don't really think there's anything to um, controversial here, but I'll let you just take a peek at it for a second, and then we can move along. <coughs> Eunice, please interrupt me if I am not getting any cues or anything. <laughs> nope, nope. Okay. No, no raise hands or anything. Thank you. All right, moving on then to permitted interaction groups. Uh, let's introduce them, and then we also talked about all of the meetings that were held, um, some suggested edits by some of the committee, uh, the members, just minor word changes, and then talks about the members. I didn't see changes to this portion until we get to meeting number four, and there was a little bit of some confusion or questions later on asking about why there were certain number of votes for different actions. So I tried to add a statement here to clarify that a little bit. Um, so it now states that the members voted to move forward with the considerations that received five or more votes, which was quorum for the meeting, and voting details are included in the meeting summary for meeting number so hopefully that clarifies about the votes. And then for meeting number five, I had put in a placeholder text that just said at meeting five, the members discussed comments on the draft report and adopted the source reduction working, source reduction working group report as revised. Um, we can certainly revise this more if something else happens during the meeting, but if there, does anyone, currently have any additions that they want added to this description for meeting number five. Okay. Any comments from the virtual forum? Is coming back? Was there a comment in the chat? Uh, no comment. I think that was just Haley rejoining. Uh, okay. That brings us to section five now. Um, these are the recommended actions. And this intro paragraph had a couple of suggested word changes that were made by a couple of people. Uh, tried to clarify, instead of just saying working group, the source reduction working group. And then um, this other statement was added here, require additional analysis and action before possible implementation. So that was changed for future steps and evaluations to continue, continue assessing feasibility. So just a little bit different spin on that. Same messaging though. Under Evaluate Funding Strategies 5.1, uh, there was a suggestion to add this statement here in place of the one here. I'll highlight it a little bit, make it a little easier to see. And now would read, the Source Reduction Working Group recognizes that most new source reduction initiatives may require funding for development and implementation, and some may require ongoing financial support. Similar messages before. Um, some suggestions to strike some of this detail about working together. Um, and say it says instead are encouraged to work together and seek out state and community partnerships. And then I see some minor text changes under section 
1.3, second paragraph. Next change is under 5.2, construction and demolition waste recommended actions. All right, so I got one comment. Would it be possible to note that the reported CND diversion is in fact material that was landfilled? PBT landfill collected wood waste and put it in a dedicated landfill cell with the hopes that someone would surface as an end user, which never happened. Um, and then the proposed response that I suggested was consider adding a footnote to the figure that clarifies this because it does say diversion here. Is there any opposition to that? Would that be okay to add that? Maybe just a comment. Um... So I, I totally agree with that comment. Um, however, I, I, I thought that there, they call, I think they called it like land banking, um, that waste. I thought that stopped several years ago. Okay. And I don't think they did it. <clears throat> that, that practice has been, um, go, had been going on at, for the window of five years that we're looking at right there, but I may be I may be completely wrong about that. But I think it predates this 20, 20, yeah, 2018. Okay. Um, but if somebody knows better than I do, please you know offer that. Quinn, did you have any more information about that? Yeah, um, it's a good good one, Mike. Um, you know, I think so. You can see the the spikes in C and D recycling, and so that that's like what I was noticing. It was basically whenever Steve Joseph left PVT is when they stopped doing that. And I think it was closer to 2020, like right in the middle there. Uh, right. I I can find out more on that. I think we may have information to Quinn, um, but yeah, I, maybe we can both look into it on both fronts because um, we we get this data um, a couple of different ways. One way is by surveying um, recycling companies um, and um, waste processors like PBT, and we also ask the Department of Health for information. Um, on what, like a permitted waste processor like PVT, what what they report um, to DOH in terms of the material that they take in every year. And if I remember correctly, oh, it's like several years now, um, but if I remember correctly, the bulk of the material that we're looking at in 2018 and 2019 actually wasn't PVT. It was like... Um, it was reported by like Pine Ridge and Grace Pacific mm. um, uh, for recycled asphalt, as recycled mm. asphalt. Um, but we can, um, I think we can go back on our records and, and check that. Okay, so how about we do this? We um, agree to, to look into that, and if there was a condition that it was actually PBT and it wasn't actually being recycled, we can add a footnote. Um, if not, but there is additional explanation maybe needed um, to just explain what those numbers mean a little bit, we could we could do that too. Okay. Yes. Does that sound like an okay? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for the comment. All right. That brings us to section 5.2.1. And this is um, adopt a diversion regulation and or deconstruction ordinance. And um, so this one, I thought this one had a change title, but I'm not seeing that. Uh, the comment here is, is a deconstruction directive something different from an ordinance or would that be one example? And so 
um, I suggest that um, on the next page, let's see, we've got the statement that other county agencies, both within blah, 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 regulator track diversion, we could add some text that describes the range of ways that this can be done and also refers to a good resource with some policy templates. So I, I found a new resource um, since doing this report and we could add that new resource. It has some nice policy templates in it. So we could add that right around here. Oh wait, sorry. Right here. So this was focused on um, diversion. I think that is a change. Maybe the comment is just not showing why it was a red line. I don't know why, but. Vinay, did you change the title on this one? Remember? Yeah, I said just a change, but that's not tied to this comment. Okay, but is the title that's shown here what you suggested or not? Mm, no. No. Um, why did that not show? I think I have it in the table. Sorry for making you dizzy. Hmm. Oh, so please edit to evaluate the diversion. Okay, so this suggestion was to evaluate a diversion and or deconstruction ordinance or statute. Was that that was the recommended text? So I'm a little behind. So what did we do with the, the previous comment? I'm going to go back up to it, I'm sorry. So the one about the PBT landfill or the one about um, the, the difference between ordinance and directive? Right. Question. So it was just asking um, if a directive was a kind of option, policy option that could be added. Oh, okay. And what was the added language to that? To address that? So, gosh, I'm sorry. It's taking a while to get back there. There we are. Okay, so the comment was Is a deconstruction directive something different from an ordinance, or would that be one example? And so I just said, in this statement, other county agencies within, within the state of Hawaii and elsewhere in the United States regulate or track the diversion of CD waste in deconstruction buildings. Um, we could say that this is done in a variety of ways. I didn't actually put the text, but we could do that right now. This can be done in a variety of ways from a deconstruction directive, deconstruction ordinance, uh, tipping, uh, differential tipping, and other methods. And then I was suggesting to add this other resource for some other examples of policy templates. Well, just, just for clarification, I, there, I believe there is a difference between the directive and the ordinance. Okay. So. But, but if you're using it as examples, um, I, I, I think it's fine. But um, I guess the context makes a difference. So like um, other agencies in the state of Hawaii and elsewhere regularly attract what So we track, we don't regulate. But um, yeah, so there's a distinction. <coughs> so I'm not quite sure. So I know there's a broad range, mm -hmm. but... So this is just suggesting that you adopt one of those ways. Um, at least that was the original title. Adopt a diversion regulation and or deconstruction ordinance. 
Um, I know that you, oh, there was one comment, here it is, suggestion to change to consider a de diversion or deconstruction ordinance or statute. And then in the table, there was a different comment, which was evaluate a diversion and or deconstruction ordinance or statute. Yeah, we broke that. I, I think we brought that one up. Mainly because, like you said, it was. It seemed as though it wasn't quite directed in one direction. Mm -hmm. So I think it still needed to be um, evaluated. evaluated. A yeah. Yeah, I think that's true, especially since we don't know if it's a directive or a <laughs> or an ordinance. Any issues with changing it to evaluate? What was the other option? Or consider. Or consider. I think consider might be better. And it says, okay, so I'll just change it to this one. tipping fees for those involved in reuse and recycling, but the other impact is that the tipping fees are too low. PBT tipping fee is $78 per ton. In contrast, in Seattle, it's $145, I believe. Not sure if you want to add a fact on that. And then I suggested with the added tax mentioned in previous comment, consider adding variable landfill tipping, uh, tipping fees and higher landfill fees. A reference to the latest annual survey of national landfill rates could be added. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? If not, I will move forward with that. Did anyone want to say something? Well, yeah, I mean, I think I just made an, uh, it's just been an interesting note about the difference in tipping fees as compared to other places. And um, sometimes there's just a dis, we just see a lot of commingling of recyclable material in dumpsters. It's just easier and cheaper to um, take it all in the landfill. So um, not sure what we do about that, but I just wanted to, point that out because it kind of fit in with uh, that section. Yeah, I think since we were talking about different ways, it would hurt to just at least have a reference to some of those landfill tipping fees. Okay. All right. That brings us down to this section 5.2.1.1 impacts and benefits and there was a suggestion um, a general comment for throughout the report instead of saying diverted from landfills I think it would be better to say diverted from disposal meaning landfills in each power and even a little bit of recycling which is what source reduction truly aims to do so that would say implementation of a diversion regulation and or construction policy for CND waste on Oahu would have a large impact on source reduction by increasing the amount of CND waste diverted from disposal, sorry. Okay. And then next 
area, there's a question for under examples. It says, in the county of Hawaii, a solid waste management plan is required for all developments seeking an environmental assessment, environmental impact statement, or special use permit. And the comment was, can we please double check that one is not required for the city and county of Honolulu? I could be wrong, but I thought a waste plan was required, although maybe with not as many green elements as the Hawaii county requirements. I was not able to figure out if that was the case. I did look. I didn't see anything screaming at me. <coughs> Does anyone on the call or in the room know? So I believe that DOH requires construction sites that are going to dispose waste to fill out like a solid waste form. And it's more of like an inform informative for uh, how much waste will be generated and where it goes, rather than um, like a management plan. So it's more of like a two-pager form, just so the, the facilities can anticipate the level of waste. Okay. And the, when we were looking at the County of Hawaii, it was, it had a little bit more to it that they were trying, and I think it might have the sections in here. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the intent of that is different from what uh, is written here, though. Right, so I think that it's still not, it's appropriate to add this or not? The, the purpose is different. If the purpose is for diversion, I think that's the intent to show how it's, um, the waste is going to be managed with the intent of actually evaluating it. The, if it's tied to environmental impact statements. Um, but the solid disclosure form really is to ensure that it's going to a legal site. Right. That's how we utilize that, and it's tied to their NPDES permit. It's not tied to a waste management plan. Okay. So, um, to com I mean, yeah, so I think the intent is different. Okay, so the way it's written is fine, then, I guess. It's Whether it's accurate, I don't, I'm not familiar with the common Hawaii's process in this area. Yeah, so this was my comment. Um, and, and maybe, I think I was doing this late at night and I'm really tired. But, um, and so maybe it was like a little misplaced, but I get the point, the, point, the reason for making the comment was that I don't, I think it's a, this, this concept is a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I, and my point was, I don't think in Honolulu we'd be starting from scratch. Okay. I think, and it, that's, I didn't know about the DOH requirement. I do think, um, maybe Quinn knows, um, I, I don't know, but I do think at the city level, um, the Department of Planning and Permitting for certain types of projects, maybe it's just like commercial industrial, um, it might be for residential, um, particularly for like demolition projects maybe, because you need permits for demolition. Um, but I, I, there are, I, I was fairly certain that there are some, there is a requirement for, as part of the permitting process, you have to submit like a waste management. Maybe it's a plan, maybe it's just information. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, again, my point was like not, it was just to make, make the point of like, we're not, we wouldn't be, for something for Honolulu, we wouldn't be starting from scratch. There's already like a requirement on the books addressing waste from project sites. And okay. that could be something that we could build on um, for, for you know, to, 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 to do something more sustainable. That's helpful. Yeah. Um. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, so for, uh, the Honolulu permits that we pull, there's no plan requirement. Um, that would be great. And maybe, you know, it's possible that there's something, you know, that's been established, but just isn't um, enforced or, you know, relayed because, you know, DPP's um, had a hard couple of years. So, um, so that might be interesting to see if, if they there is some system in place that could just be brought to the forefront and they the the plan checkers could start requiring that. 
Yeah, that's interesting, Quinn. So for not to sidetrack, but like for for so for the demo projects that reuse does, um, does reuse act, um, do the permitting for the demolition, or does the homeowner or the property owner, or how does how does that work exactly? Sometimes we yeah, sometimes it does. Uh, occasionally, there's an architect involved that does it. Okay. And um, for when you do it, um, I, I guess what sort of information do you have to provide, if any, about where where the where the material that you're taking off site is going? Nothing. Wow. Nothing. Interesting. Yeah. In fact, in fact, EPP has a form permit. Um, for demo and it always says all the material is going to PVT. I'm like, well, that's not true, but thanks for the permit anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good good target area, I think. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel like there's any text changes? Yeah, because I, I think it like brings it, you know, for people that aren't thinking about it, it starts to, you know, change the mindset of contractors and Folks that need to be start starting to think about like what are their responsibilities and opportunities for waste reduction. Even if it's not like you have to do this, it's like maybe they just you're required to submit a, a plan. Mm -hmm. So at least it gets it, you know, out into the out into the general industry more. You know. I mean, so it, it says the city currently does not regulate the diversion of CND waste away from landfills or deconstruction of buildings to minimize landfill CND waste. Um, you could say something about, however, uh, looking at the existing, you know, permit requirements, maybe is a, a place to start from, and it could be expanded upon to provide, you know, more version or something like that that might be a spot to add something about that yeah I mean it's certainly um, if there is something in place it's certainly easier to build upon something I think than try to create something um, I, I'm still wondering like I like so I yeah, absolutely take Quinn's word for it, but I, I could swear that I've come across a project before and maybe it's like a larger, larger commercial industrial and maybe it's just new construction where I thought there a waste management plan is required. I, I, I don't I don't recall um, and I shouldn't have the answer to this, but I don't recall, you know, certainly no diversion requirements or reuse requirements or anything like that. But I did think that the contractor was generally required to like report on how the waste is being managed and if I'm correct and that is the case then maybe that's something to build on but if I'm completely like just spacing on this then um, then that's a huge opportunity okay. yeah. alright I think you're right I think it's so yeah I mean Mike it could have been a lead project or um, sometimes with government contracts they, they ask for that a waste, re or waste management plan yeah, because lead does require that. Yeah. Yeah. Renee, what were you about to say? No, I, I was going to say that I, I've seen that too, but yeah. I don't think it was tied to a uh, demolition permit. I could be wrong, but I thought it was tied to some sort of like a land use permit or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's across the board. Okay. From, from what I've seen. All right. Well, I can I can try to add some generic language just to say that you know you could start looking at what is the current requirements for contractors related to waste and, and build on that. All right. That brings us down to here. Under implementation, oh, I just clarified which county this was for. All right, then, the, then there was a comment um, after the sentence that says, requirement and identification 
of licensed waste haulers in the plan could also prevent potential misuse of transfer stations or recycling and reuse facilities. And the comment was, need to explain how these could be misused. So, any thoughts about on what to elaborate on for that? Is this just trying to say that the that there are waste haulers working on a commercial scale that are using transfer stations as sort of a residential use in a way? Like, yeah. is that what? Yeah. Thanks, Amy. I think that's that's what it was. Um, that's a that's a big um, currently a big problem for us. Um, essentially, um, transfer stations, convenience centers are are really only designed for residential type waste, but we know. Um, that we have a lot of commercial, quote unquote, misuse, abuse at, at the stations. Um, we have we have plans in the works to address it, but um, it's it's still currently an issue. Okay, we can clarify that. And again, change out the word disposal for landfills. A minor word change here, and then there was another comment. Recommended text edit right here and elaboration. Uh, what specific attempts by the city have been made to develop CMD related ordinances to the, um, and resolutions and recommend including ordinance and resolution numbers for reference? And then what makes the current CMD management situation much more dire? Recommend elaborating to support understanding of the current CMD management situation and of the factors that contribute to its direness. So uh, the direness is that PBT landfill is, is closing in a couple of years and there is not an alternative CND landfill. Um, also, it's just, oh, you have a huge disposal issue anyways and CND takes up a lot of material space um, and so it's, definitely not the best use of any landfill space um, and materials are incredibly expensive so we, we, we can certainly elaborate on this a little I know that early on I think it was meeting one I'm gonna pull up some old slides real quick we talked a little bit about um, some of the policies that were considered back in 2017 so I could try to add some of these into the text, unless anyone else has a better list already, or we can look one up, so. But these were the ones that we were referring to originally. So we can just try to build those either into some sort of a footnote or work them into the text for clarification. And then add some context about why the situation is so dire. Any, any, any issues with that? No? Okay. Another minor text change here. And then that brings us to section 5.2.2. All right, and this um, is this item here that's highlighted, and it says, as a potential solution, industry stakeholders and city agencies could work with the state to streamline and simplify the permitting process for CMD material management. And then it says, please describe the problem mentioned here. And again, this was just those contractors, uh, or sorry, the 
when a new recycling for CND or concrete um, processor wants to come online, it's, it's very difficult and it's kind of keeping them from joining the system. So, so I guess that's my confusion because we keep talking about reuse uh -huh. and then, but the whole solution here is on recycling. So we don't permit reuse facilities that reuse materials for its original intended purpose, like doors and windows and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But if you're going to process the material into something else, then we consider that recycling and permit that. So um, the, the title is for reuse, mm -hmm. it's, but we only talk about recycling. So if there's, and I wasn't part, part of the pig, so I don't know what the discussion was. Was there any other permitting problems that the reuse side? I think it was talking about like CM cement recyclers, and so. So it's recycling, not reuse. Well, however, you are still reusing. Right, so like you're you're taking you're segregating the material from cement, and then it's getting reused in a different way. It's being processed into another um, form, so it's recycling, not yeah. reuse. So, so the other permits that could be utilized for reuse facilities could mm -hmm. be like zoning or land use permits, special use permits, you know that kind of thing. Okay, so. If there is no problems with that, and then and we want to focus on recycling, then can we talk about recycling? I know this is a social reduction working group, but to me, the, 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 the transition of the terms is misleading and confusing for me, or at least for me, I don't know about others, but that's... What, what about just having, so, you know, say you have a big demolition, and you have a lot of kinds of materials, and all of the CND is taken Say it's taken to a processing facility, right? Some of those materials might be recycled, but some of them might be just reused. But you would still get a permit to cover the act activities of yeah, so taking the material, segregating it, and then figuring out where it goes from there. Correct? So, um, if Alan... Alan's not on. Alan, he's yeah. the yeah, So, Alan Demo does that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they take material, they salvage, they, um, and they take... We consider them a transfer station. Right. So, so materials handling. I think he, stuff. He, he's the one so, that brought this up. So I think he's thinking that there is a. Yeah, barrier. so if. I, I guess I'm hung up on the term you we use. Okay. So maybe if we can say for. Expand it a little bit more. Um, I know it's outside the scope of the, the report, but make that clarification that Processing, it's not, recycling, and. Potential reuse so, for solid waste <laughs> management or something of that nature, because we, we permit all the solid waste management. Okay. Yeah, but it's not specific to reuse. Can so, we just change it to processing because then it can be open to? What does that mean? Right. It could be recycling or reuse. Reuse would it be? I'd, I'd want to be careful too that we don't have like, I mean, this is obviously a good idea. This is, a, I think it's a good idea, um, so but, too, but, it's but it's just a little bit of a scope creep for this, for, the, for our group. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if, I recall Quinn raising the point about like how, um, so Alan certainly talked about this, but also Quinn mentioned, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Quinn, about how like it's, it's difficult to have space for like large influxes of material like when a hotel closes down for example right um and you know just kind of scale up for that but then like scale back down and um, um so like s space is a pro problem um yeah and i, I kind of even remember talking about this the permitting for um but I, I think it was, I recall it being more in the context of like, I guess it doesn't, in the context of reuse, but I guess like to Lene's point, they really don't permit reuse operations. Um, but maybe like more, maybe it was more so like a transfer, like a material transfer facility, mm -hmm. now that I'm thinking about it. Not so much a processing operation, yeah. which would be, would, would be permitted, that would be permitted, I think. Um, where materials like being unloaded onto the ground as soon as it hits the ground, I think is is a is one of the one of the times it, it gets regulated. So if we change it to 
uh, streamlining the permitting process for CND material management. Um, Transfer or I don't know. That, that's probably. Or, sorry, go ahead. Well, or is C and D material recycling? Is that maybe it's just you know maybe the using the word reuse there kind of confuses things a bit. So I just, recycling I just think that instead, there, just whenever you're doing recycling, there are opportunities to set things aside and actually reuse things. But you're not going to have that if you don't have that facility to collect the material. Stockpile, you know, segregated, stockpile it. So it is a, a bit of a, a transfer, but it's also a bit of a kind of a pre-processing where you're like sorting through and deciding what you're going to do with it next. And you won't have yeah. the use if you don't have that. Right. I guess. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I guess I guess my 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 thought would be, um, you know, just to kind of stay true to the report would be not to be able to talk about recycling. And although it's like, although it's not ideal, I probably probably recommend that it stay more am ambiguous and just limit it to material management. And and then um, you know the, the takeaway would be that look, this obviously like space. Management space to manage this material is an issue. We recognize that, um, and then um, you know whether it's for reuse or or actually re actually recycling it. And so um, it's a you know, just the, the issue in, in general is a, is, a, is a problem. And um, maybe just not go into the specifics of like the actual use of the site. Okay. So I don't know. I didn't, yeah, I didn't no articulate point. that very well, but I think it's just as a general problem under which we use follows, um, falls. And so um, I think we could apply it to, to reuse, but it also is applicable to recycling. And your point about the storage is elsewhere in the report talking about the need to provide you know, storage and warehousing for material like, like they do in San Francisco and other places. Yeah, that's in a different action, right? That's the next section. Yep, the next action. Okay, well, um, I can try to make this more more general and take out the word reuse generalize it so it's not supposed to specify what you're doing with it. But then the, um, then you got to make sure that the applicability of the solid permit applies <laughs> yeah. without knowing what the intent is. I know. So that's... that's. Uh, unfortunately, there were six members that voted for this during the meeting, so... <laughs> yeah, but the... It was for consideration before without seeing what the language was going to be. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize that that was going to be the only example. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to include like zoning and other kinds of permits that are in, um, that's required for reuse facilities. Okay. Um, but that's why I, kind of, I got even more confused when we were only talking about a recycling permit for reuse. So would your preference when it be to just strike that? action in its entirety because the storage problem is mentioned in the next action so we're not losing anything with the space I turned to the pig who dis described, um, this stuff, discussed this in detail what, what the actual problem is and we're going to continue to do what we're doing as far as um, moving to the permitting and stuff but um, as it applies to reuse was there anything else that could be put in here to expand and help move that forward. I do not think that we got into that level of detail. Emily, maybe you remember otherwise. I, I did pull the one slide that we had, and it was streamlined permitting processes for c and concrete recyclers. That's really all yeah. that we had there. I don't think we got into the specific details, um, but what I'm hearing from this conversation is that in order to 
set up a new space or facility, it would require more than just a solid waste permit, is what I'm hearing. There's zoning permits, potentially like special use permits depending on the location. So maybe I'm hearing that um, it would be general streamlining of permitting process. Is that what you're saying? For, for setting up like a new facility? Well, actually, I guess I'm thinking of a step back and asking what was what's the concern what other permits are being is difficult to obtain for these uh, facilities and could mm -hmm. we bring that in um I, I don't know i mean i haven't tried applying for for that and i wasn't part of the to hear the discussions so um you know i i start i'm not discounting the importance of what's here it's just the placement of it in this section that's that's there's the confusing part for me. Yeah, I'm not totally sure. Um, I guess something that's sticking or I'm remembering is Alan mentioning like education as a um, in, in terms of like the permitting process itself doesn't necessarily need um, changing. Right, like from a DOH perspective, but perhaps like the educational side mm -hmm. to educate, uh, just make it easier in the industry. Yes. Yeah. So what are what are ways to make it easier? Uh, do people understand what the permits are? Do they know how to apply? Usually um, with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well. Unfortunately, Alan is not here, and I think he was the person that was really leading the charge on this. I think that perhaps we need to just strike it. I don't. I mean, I, I yeah, I'm feeling a little conflicted because I, I feel like you have to have places to accept material in order to be able to reuse it. And that is a barrier because he's saying that there aren't enough people doing that. But without the specific kind of permit, I'm not exactly sure. But I don't think it's worth not approving the report about. <laughs> so. this in and you just say recycling then I know there's the, the mix of terminologies and not terminal I mean mix of um, waste management uh, priorities but as, as long as it's consistent in this section and it's not with, um, recycling or transfer stations or uh, It's just contrary to the purpose. Okay. So change it instead of for reuse, say recycling, or say for recycling and reuse. Because I, I really do think it's like a there is like even at recycling facilities you have opportunities for reuse. Okay. So what if? Um, I don't want to hold this up, but 
support with what Ben has suggested and just talk about some new material management, um, establishing new recycling facilities, new reuse. And then I think we might be okay. And then you just remove just re new recycling facilities. It is a little different, but you know, address um, Alan's concern. Okay, so sorry. Again, title would be changed to work towards streamlining the permitting process for C and D material management. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then the next sentence: the permitting process for C and D material. Exactly. Recycling, take out and reuse. Yes, because his, his one example was concrete recycling. Okay. Right? So um, currently poses a barrier for establishing new recycling facilities. facilities. Okay, thank you. I will go through and take out the other reused parts of that paragraph to be in alignment. Note. So Lindsay, can you add a line in there that says as in the in the um, mention of these recycling facilities, that those present a uh, potential for reuse if if established, something like that, so that it catches catches that piece. Thank you. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. All right. I think we can move on to the next item. That action does not have any markups to it. Moving along. All right, and then now we're down to 5.3, which is the photovoltaic panel waste recommended actions. Uh, throughout this section, there was a couple different ways this these materials and metals were discussed. Sometimes it said harmful, sometimes it said um, dangerous, I, don't, I can't remember. But anyways, we've, we've just taken it, those extra words out and it will now say toxic metals. And the next comment was a question under 5.3.1 under the panel installers are encouraging owners to replace their panels before the panel lifespan is over to install newer high performance panel technologies. And the comment that was added was why? Is this a problem in it itself or is this because people are not maintaining the panels? So my recollection of this was that it's just Kind of like pushing the newest cell phone on you you know your cell phone works just fine but there's the newer variety that someone wants to sell you and so that was the comment that was being or that was the issue that was being represented i think we could probably just like add something then that that notes that that's like the installers are like Pushing them to get rid of them prematurely or something mm -hmm. like that. Just, just something that kind of frames it better. Okay. Or, or just to the end of that sentence, because it says they're, they're, um, the installers are encouraging owners to replace their panels before the panel lifespan is over. So that kind of hits that, yeah, it's premature. To install newer high performance panel technologies to increase sales and or um, available renewable energy because sometimes they push for a change because somebody wants more renewable energy but they don't have a space so the only way to get it is to, to put a newer panel in with with you know that's that's like looking at the installers in the best light possible but the increased sales is 
more likely. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Thank you for that suggestion. I added it. All right. Um, the next paragraph, 5.2.1.1, impacts and benefits. Um, change the word education on to raising awareness of, and then added after could inform owners, we added and contractors. Okay. And then the next um, edit again was around toxicity, so we took out the word environment, environmental. And then there was a, a comment that was a kind of a question Are there reuse programs for? Oh, hold on. Please do not restart. Um, this was the, the bullet on PV panel reuse options, and the question was, are there reuse programs? If not, shouldn't this be development of reuse programs? So when you have some reuse programs, correct? I'm sorry. I'm slow with my unmuting. No um, yeah, and it's interesting because we had kind of mixed results in the demand for them. Um, and we took like a huge, huge donation and they've been sitting around. So, you know, the, we're still evaluating, um, you know, how much demand there is for the, the reuse of the of the panels, there's definitely some, you know, a lot of people on Big Island, farmers, people with more space than, you know, than rooftop. Um, they just put them out on the, you know, install them out on the ground. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wish I had better news. It's, it's looking, it's looking like it's going to be tough. Um, but luckily inner Island solar supply has their recycling option. Um, except it's like $30 a panel. So I think people are a little nervous about the cost adding up for that. But maybe that's a reason why they would, you know, have the panels last longer, you know, if it costs a lot of money to get rid of them. So, so this list was uh, supposed to be bullets of potential items that could be included with the kind of public education campaign. So, I mean, I think, is it all right if we leave it just PV panel reuse options on Oahu for working panels? Because there is some, and the education can talk about how, you know, what's currently working, what's not, kind of what's in there. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. And then the next one was, please add the following bullet. Regulatory requirements for proper handling, recycling, and disposal, including universal waste regulations. So, great suggestion. I should have just added it. Let me do that. Ideally, that'd be the first bullet. Yeah, I could. Good, good call. Let me try that again. All right. Let's move along. Is everybody doing okay, or do, do folks need like a five-minute break? We're, we're making great progress. Way better than it appears, because most of the rest of the file, I think, is um, a lot of appendices. So. <laughs> everybody doing okay? All right, well, let me know if you need a break. All right, moving down the file. Under section 5.3.2.2, impacts and benefits. Uh, there was some suggested uh, language changes here, again, taking out the word hazardous. 
And then in this sentence about mid-paragraph here, it used to say, managing the PV panel waste stream protects the environment. Suggested change now is managing the PV panel waste stream in a manner that ensures toxic material is not released into the environment. Good suggested change. Any issues with that? Okay, and then under the next section, 5.3.2.3, uh, example, just change the word could for would. And then the next changes are under 5.3.4, explore ex extended producer responsibility. Uh, previously said, the DOH is currently exploring EPR options. Uh, recommended changes, EPR options for PV panels are currently being explored. Okay. And then moving down the list, under 5.3.4.3. Again, uh, the DOH is being replaced with the words city and state agencies. So I just wanted to clarify that um, a lot of the work is also being done with um, state office of state energy office. Okay. So um, there's been a number of bills also in the legislature that has uh, been that has been brought up that brought both of our agencies and others, not just us, but, um, so I just want to make it clear that it's not just, it's multiple state agencies working on this, it's not just one. Okay, I think that that's great. This, so does your suggested uh, edit cover your concerns or do you feel like you need more? No, I think it's fine. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, um, yeah. explain why we're doing that. I think that's It's helpful. not that we don't want to be a part of it, we are a part of it, it's just that there's other agencies. More than needs to you. It's just not, it's more than this. Okay. Perfect. So those two changes have been made in the file. And then moving down the list, that brings us down to um, section 5.4.1, support, well, excuse me, it originally said initiate reusable container and mobile washing program. There was a recommendation to change it a couple different ways. Um, one was initiate reusable container pilot program, another was support establishment of reusable container and mobile washing pilot program. Is there any issues with changing the action title? I mean, it, I hate to word Smith by committee, it's probably one of the worst things <laughs> ever, but what I would say here is that support establishment, we, the, the recommendation here should just be establish reusable container mobile washing pilot, if that is the recommendation, that's the, right? I mean, that's support establishment is... Yeah, okay. Just establish, well, I would, it, but I'm not wed to that, so... How's about continued work towards initiating? Sorry, say that again? Continue work towards? Continue work towards? I don't know what, sorry, I guess it's hard to hear. What is, what's the suggestion there? Continue work towards reusable container and mobile washing pilot program. I don't care. That would be another way of saying to establish it, right? So I, I just going for brevity here in the title. So your recommendation is establish reusable container and mobile washing pilot program. Is there any hesitation on on using that word when I? 
Um, well, I just wanted to make it, thought it was clear that we needed to do additional evaluation. So I wasn't sure if it were at the place where it could actually be established yet. And so that, that was the only point. Um, Lindsay Nicole has her hand up. Oh, sorry. Nicole? Hi. Can you hear me? My headphones just stopped working. Yes. Uh, it sounds good. Okay. Can you still hear me? I can hear you now, but I wasn't okay. hearing you. <laughs> yeah, there's a weird lag, Nicole. Okay, but now I'm back? Yes. Um, I like the established reusable container program. Continuing sort of insinuates that the city has been involved, which is not the case to my awareness. Um, and I, to Lene's point about the need for sort of further investigation, I would suggest looking at other municipalities, including the, you know, two million dollars that's being invested in Hawaii County as um, a way to sort of do investigation by proxy. I don't know that we're going to be that terribly individual that what uh, we'll need something vastly different from Hawaii County. So those were my thoughts. And Specifically on the mobile piece, um, I had a thought and then I lost it, so I'll come back if I remember it. You know, so I think the reason it originally said initiate reusable container and mobile washing program is that that was trying to acknowledge that, you know, you might not have all the details figured out, but that you're going to start down that road. Oh, okay. Like that's... Yeah. Okay. I I agree with that statement. Okay. So I can't remember. I'm sorry. When I combine everybody's comments, it's hard to remember who had what comment. But was there another comment on this title, or would it be okay if we reverted back to initiate reusable container and mobile washing program? That works for me. Okay. And um, Nicole, I think that we talk about the refillable stuff a little later, but maybe I'm just remembering your letter instead. So maybe I've got that. Did you, were you suggesting we add another example or something else to the text? No, I just realized I was kind of conflating what is happening in Hawaii County with this suggestion. The suggestion we've made is to pilot a mobile dishwashing facility. Right. That is not what Hawaii County is doing, so. I guess, generally speaking, I feel like it's important to acknowledge that $2 million has been allotted to uh, researching how to implement reusables already in another county, but I don't think we need to put that in here. I put it in my statement. Yes, that's where I so. remember it now. So speaking of, of your statement, I think this is yours, hopefully. That is mine. I also realized everybody else put a logo, so maybe I should be upload with a logo. I thought we were supposed to use that heading. Oh, I like it. I think it's very nice. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, okay. Uh, is it all right? Do you mind if I, I think it's a good time to actually read your statement since yours talks a lot about this portion and that way people have seen it. As the outgoing executive director of Zero Waste Oahu, a community-driven NGO with a mission to rebuild a waste-free and equitable Hawaii, I appreciate the time and space to connect with diverse stakeholders on the topic of waste of production through this working group, 
Our small NGO was founded based on the empirical evidence that reducing our waste footprint is critical to climate, community, and ecosystem health. We were thrilled to see the city and county of Honolulu uphold their commitment to bring stakeholders together around this topic. The working group would, could not feasibly and thoroughly consider the cost benefit of every action that the city and county of Honolulu would take or support to ensure less materials are entering our landfill, incinerator, or other or overburdening recycling systems. Solid waste is a vast topic that could span sectors. It can originate from industrial practices, production processes, construction and demolition, convenience-driven food and product packaging, and anything in between. Waste may not, or may be toxic or non-toxic, recyclable or not, or compostable or not. The ideal is to create processes and products where reuse is given is a given. Toxicity is not present present and costly downstream waste management infrastructure is minimized. I hope this working group made it clear that waste prevention is what we need to invest in and that there are many actions to implement that require no further studies. Waste reduction is the solution that people, the planet, and our climate desperately need. Before we build more expensive waste processing infrastructure or try and solve the issues of the global recycling market, we need to mitigate the unchecked and ever-growing mountain of trash we create and spend lots of money to manage. That way we can create composting, recycling, and other waste management systems that are optimized at a scale that has the least amount of burden on frontline communities. Zero Waste Oahu has largely focused on solutions and policy to packaging and product waste from fast-moving goods, including convenience items and a food product packaging. Waste reduction in the sector is a low-hanging fruit that the city and county can also take immediate action to address. Although brands and packaging producers um, market throwaway items as the best choice or strategically entrap consumers, in systems dependent on overpackaged and throwaway goods, it remains true that throwaway goods are neither the only choice nor a good choice. The county of, of Hawaii had taken, has taken action to address this problematic waste stream by securing over $2 million to pursue a reusable takeout food packaging system for the town of Hilo. Instead of creating landfill down rubbish from short lived food and beverage packaging, municipal leadership is investing in long-term sustainability and preventing waste from reaching the landfill. This will save taxpayers money on landfill maintenance, minimize the frequency with which new landfills need to be opened to prevent climate and ecosystem impacts from making and managing single-use packaging, and enable a local circular economy to flourish and create jobs. Given the incredible leadership and foresight from the County of Hawaii, it is worth noting that the first reusable takeout packaging program in Hawaii was piloted here in the city and county of Honolulu. During the two-year pilot program, which operated with a handful of food service partners and was managed by Zero Waste Oahu, we prevented 20,000 containers from entering the waste stream. This saved at least 1.4 tons of waste and one ton of carbon emissions. Even with the water required to wash reusables, we saved 4,600 gallons in comparison to the water needed to make throwaway packaging. Imagine what positive impacts would be realized for Oahu's climate, oceans, and communities if this program were supported to scale up like is happening in Hilo. This pilot program called Full Cycle Takeout was achieved with support from community partners and capital from federal and private sector funders. However, the city and county has yet to partner with, invest in, or support this proactive, impactful, and very practical solution to one major component of the municipal celebrity street. I urge the city and county to follow suit with neighbor island leadership and take action to create a food service sector built on reuse and that embodies circular economy principles. As I write this letter, press releases are flooding my inbox announcing the EU Parliament's recent vote to regulate packaging waste. This vote echoes the local action taken by our neighbors on Hawaii Island. Packaging reduction and reuse programs have tangible and proven impact, and we don't need more work working groups to discuss the solution. Reuse is being readopted around the world as well as in our own state. It is time to move beyond managing a burdensome amount of trash and take decisive action to proactively reduce our waste stream. With appreciation and gratitude, and the majority to share some. All right, so 
thank you for putting the, those thoughts together, Nicole, and that will be one of the letters included in the appendix. Um, we will look at the last letter that we received in a little bit. So that brings us, sorry, to a couple of recommended text changes. Um, so that, let me just take a quick look here. Um, a few clarifications I think were made to this text. And for this unfortunately part, it was that the original framing insinuates that the disposable takeout containers used at large events are non-compliant. So the new text would now state, the DFO restricts the use and sale of disposable plastic foodware, example, takeout containers, and disposable plastic serviceware, example, takeout utensils, provided by all food vendors and business operating within the city and county of Honolulu, large public events, even when using compliant disposable takeout containers, still generate large amounts of single-use waste. Any issues with changing that text as shown? So that's not like, it's not saying we're recommending that, that we mandate that anything happen. It's just saying, it's just stating a fact that there is a lot of waste created at large events. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Is that what that is? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my read. Okay. Too. All right. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to explain the DFWO and then a little bit about how large a lot of waste is used are made at single use large events. Alright, so then the next one is a little further down on the page, 24. Um, and then this sentence started as a solution, the source reduction working group recommend that policy language be modified to create an exemption for mobile washing services. And the comment was, if existing regulations require mobile washing units to be connected to a brick and mortar commercial support kitchen, then first understanding the underlying rationale for the existing regulation is required in order to propose meaningful change. I think that might have come from your team, Lene. Do we know the basis for that regulation? Is it a regulation or a policy? Um, it's a regulation. Do we, do we it's a regulation and it's meant for um, food trucks, so that you don't have food trucks that are operating, that their only, only way to process food and wash dishes and hands and the whole thing is just out of a food truck. So if all food trucks have to have a brick and mortar commercial kitchen that they're attached to. And so the reason why we're suggesting this as a solution is because for just for washing, you're not doing food prep, you're not, you know, having to, to do all that, that this is meant to create an exemption when it's just a wash truck, basically. Was the food safety program asked about the ability to change that regulation? No. I, ha I haven't been able to reach them, so I wasn't able to. Confirm. When you, I'm not, I'm not sure. When you say the food safety program, what are you? The, referencing? Uh, the portion of the department that regulates um, food safety and food establishments. Oh, I did not contact them about this. I've spoken with them, Lene, under the. Uh, we were had fundraised raised funds to purchase a mobile dishwashing unit and um, in the process of planning that out and speaking to the food safety branch, they basically said there's not a mechanism by which to make that sort of food truck legal. I didn't, or non-food truck, food truck, mobile dishwashing unit, um, I didn't ask them if it was possible to change the language, but I've spoken with Peter, Peter Oshiro about that before. 
um, on other matters, so I assume it is technically possible. Whether or not they want to is a different question, if that helps. Okay, thank you. Did you need any changes made or? I mean, um, I mean that's, that's the only thing, right? I mean, if there is a, a basis for that regulation that we are not aware of, it's hard to say whether or not <laughs> they, they would be open to change yeah. of that. And I, I can't speak for the department on that area. So instead of it saying as a solution, the source reduction re recommend that policy language be modified to create an exception for mobile dishwashing services, removing the requirement of a brick and mortar support kitchen for mobile dishwashing services. Do you want to add something like, um, if possible, or, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If well, one thing, one thing that could be done is rather than saying as a solution, mm -hmm. you know, just saying that the, the source reduction working group recommends that policy language be modified before this. And it's not actually that that's the solution, but that might be what could help. It may be that a full new regulation, we don't modify existing language. We, anyway, there's different ways to do this. So rather than saying that that is the solution that we just. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. All right, that brings us down to 5.4.1.1. And this statement here, it is also important to remember that a large amount of food-related packaging litters our beaches and oceans, escaping detection and quantification in waste composition studies. And it says, please provide a reference. So we will update that with a reference. The next comment all right the pig associated with this topic felt that the first step to successfully implementing this recommendation would be to modify existing policy to remove the requirement for mobile dishwashing services to be connected um i actually think this is fine now since we changed that. And the next comment then is this next statement. Highlighted here. And the comment is based on my review of the meeting notes. I asked if a pilot could be done. Fully answered the question. Thus, the application here does not apply. I suggest deleting this sentence. So the sentence is, however, through conversations with the larger source reduction working group, Lene Ichikosuo of DOH Solid and Hazardous Waste Branch expressed her opinion that policy changes can be rather difficult but may have more success than others. Specific pilot projects showed success. So we'd like that just to be removed. Okay. And that brings us to the next action, 5.4.2. Again, this one has some different wording changes, and um, it currently is suggested to be continue evaluating source reduction options for product packaging, including extended producer responsibility. And that was due to the fact that um, we talk a lot about producer, extended producer responsibility in this action. So, any issues with changing the name? Okay. Um, um, oh, maybe so. Comments. From <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, I don't know. The other way it was drafted is maybe a bit more broad. Might be preferable, but um, because EPR is really specific, 
thing, and it means a lot of different things depending on where you're doing it, what county is doing it, and where you're looking in the state of the world. So it's just kind of um, the term gets thrown around a lot, but it means a lot of different things. I wonder if it would just be clearer to use the old language you had. Okay, so then it, it would just be uh, continue evaluating product packaging source reduction needs and options. Yeah. Any issue with that? I think that was your comment, Lene. Is it? Well, maybe not like that. I thought so, but I'm misremembering. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, uh, there are also some uh, comments in the chat. Oh. Um, I can't see the chat, so hold on. Let me see if I can figure that out. And while you're doing that, because uh, I don't think that's directly on on the comment that Lauren made, I don't have. I don't have an issue with changing it back to that more more broad okay. title. Okay, I see a number of comments. Um, so one was reflecting on the C and D section. I think it's best to say adopt, not explore. I didn't follow the reasoning for changing the header. And then um, we said we could circle back after the product packaging. So we can do that in a second. And then we've got, thank you for the um, reference here. And any other, was there another one? I thought there was one more. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna say revert back to the language. Title. Okay. Um, Can I actually can you clarify really quick that the this actual the, the language that we're getting to here is that a, there should be a task force in this section, is that right? Because if that's the case, then actually we should just say establish a task force to evaluate uh, product packaging or whatever the original language was. I'm not sure that was really the intent of our discussion with the committee, but to be honest, but I, yeah. Just because I think if you're going to do a task force on that specific on the EPR, it, it's not, you should have a broader group of people involved than the ones that were involved in this. But, and it, um, I think it's also because it's changing quickly and, you know, there's more to research about all of this. So, and certainly if it's going to happen, it would have to happen at a higher state level, right? Yes, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that we are the task force. I'm just saying that if, is that is that what in this in the body of this text here to say? Because if I look at that sentence, the working group recommends creating a task force or extending some branch of. Oh, oh, moving screen. Whatever. Uh, uh, oh, all right. Um, can you? The, S, the working group recommends creating a task force or. <laughs> or extending some branch of the working group to monitor these trends and needs to continue determining the best source reduction methods at the time. So if, that, if that's kind of what this is saying. Anyway, I'm, I'm just noting that, that that's kind of what this is saying. The recommendation is for a group to sort of do this, yes. not just, yeah. It's, it's looking at it further. It's investigating it more, so. 
Yeah, so then the original title is fine. I was just throwing it out there as a suggestion to say if really what we're asking is to establish a, a body that will focus on this and tackle this, that might be, that could be included in the title. But I, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I don't mind how it goes. Any other comments on this one? Um, I'm wondering if this isn't going too far off the discussion, if, if what we're recommending is a state, like the counties come together statewide, because he, to your point, EPR is not going to happen likely at the county level, but counties would be involved. So I'm just thinking through how realistic it is to assign a Honolulu specific EPR working group to something that is likely a state policy or what that interrelationship looks like. Yeah, that's a great point. And that sentence then that's like roughly three or four down there, this, the working group recommends the state uh, creating a statewide task force and then not saying it's an extension of this group to do that monitoring, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that kind of echoes many of the, for the past three years at the state legislature, there has been attempts to create a EPR working group. So I think that goes along nicely with that as well. Okay. Did I, did I uh, capture what you just mentioned, that those changes okay? Oops. Okay. All right. Um, so this section, again, still talking about source reduction for product packaging under the impacts and benefits. There was a comment. Note that most of the manufacturers where the products are made are on the mainland and not Hawaii-based. Hawaii consumer base is exceedingly small compared to the mainland. States like California have exponentially large consumer base that can change the way packaging of goods is done. However, Hawaii does not have that luxury. If there are too many restrictions, manufacturers may no longer provide products to Hawaii. We must also keep in mind that manufacturers and retailers want to be sure the items that are purchased are damage-free when the consumer receives them. Implementing EPR programs can significantly increase costs for producers, which may ultimately be passed on to consumers. And remember, any time retail is touched, the cost is ultimately passed on to the consumer, hiking prices even higher on products and goods, and therefore keeping Hawaii one of the most expensive places to live. Some states who reduce packaging are seeing an increase in damaged goods, albeit electronics, food, home goods, Fortunately, it will ultimately be the consumer who pays the price, unfortunately, who pays the price as prices would have a tendency to increase. So, a lot of commentary there um, for impacts and benefits. Um, do you think this is a, a spot to add a little bit about potential impacts, or again, is this better represented in the, the letter that we saw previously? Uh, Nicole hand is up. Nicole? Yeah, I think if we are, everything would just need to be cited if we're including those. But I all think I agree that it fits nicely into a letter. Yeah. I think because this is, we don't have references to this, that it's probably better to just keep it in the letter. Is that okay with everyone? Yep. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> then we can move along here. Um, all right. This, and this was in response to the confusion of how many members voted yes 
for the recommendations, but I think I added a little previous text, so that's addressed previously. All right, and some minor text change here. Uh, recommendation to cite this, which will add the citation and the link. And this was scra um, scratched, this part of the section. And then this last bullet was updated to individuals without commercial kitchens. Next page, right above figure nine, um, just struck the words and diverting. So it now is just most preferred option for preventing wasted food. And then there was a suggestion for a title change to increase businesses, food reuse, and organics recycling, since most of the chapter talks about businesses of a certain size. Okay, this comment here um, is under impacts and benefits. And the sentence reads, while recycling is less preferred than source reduction methods. The source reduction working group recognizes that not all food is edible for human or animal consumption. The comment is, need to fix this to clarify recycling is not source reduction. Um, how, so it says while recycling is less preferred than source reduction. Was that just a... Uh, Maybe that was my comment, and maybe that was not correct. I, um, I think I maybe misread this. Okay. So sorry. Please, no worries. Just, please disregard. I think I, I think I read it as like all recycling is a less preferred source source reduction method. Yeah. Like yeah. Sorry. About Easy that. to do. Thanks for clarifying. All right. Now that brings us to the implementation summary table. Um, again, I will update all of the action titles that are under each one so that they match um, in the, the titles from the text that we discussed, but there are a number of uh, other comments here. So we've got um, many requests to delete DOH. And that, again, is probably just for the agencies, since it's multiple agencies, Lene, is that correct? Um, well, I don't think you want to limit it to just DOH, right? Yeah. And then uh, there was a request to uh, add resilience office under this this line, adopt uh, diversion regulation or deconstruction ordinance as a partner. Um, let's see. Sorry, trying to find where each of these are. Okay, so this one here under owners for the adopt a diversion ordinance. It, but the request was, please edit to read city and state. And then, <coughs> under this one, it says, please delete. DOH will not commit to any milestones or dates as we have our own plans and programs in place. So this one is talking about the streamlining the permitting process. Um, so DOH, first of all, would you like it removed? Oh, okay. Oh, well, you can leave that as ongoing. And then the, the one that says 2024 and ongoing is ongoing. Okay, so just ch take out 2024 and and just leave it as ongoing? Yeah. Okay. 
but leave the other text. Yeah, and then if we can just clarify that we're only continuing to streamline solid waste permitting process, we're not going to be responsible for other permits. <laughs> okay. Can we volunteer you for that, though? <laughs> <laughs> for the owners, do you want to leave DOH, or is this another one? Well, if it was intent, that's why we had the question, what permits is this uh -huh. for? Yeah. Because if it's for all permits, we don't have control over right. all permits. And so um, that's the thing. If, you, if it's all permits, then we would say city and state, right? Okay. City, state, or federal, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. And then... Um, then you can make it broader than just, but right now the text is all limited to one. one. So, you know, it depends on what the intent is. Is it just one or all? So, if we're going to go with, that's kind of where we were when we were discussing it earlier. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, if, if the intent is to be broader, then I would say city, state, federal, depending on what the issue is. And then we have to make the other one. Broad. So let's, since it's not broad, we'll just leave it as DOH. Okay. And then we narrow it to streamline and solve those permitting process. Right. And then remove the reuse on the action. Okay. All right. And then that brings us down to educate and involve stakeholders. And again, I uh, added the resilience office to that one. And then this was a request for, for under the PV panels, educate owners about PV panel base to change that to city and state agencies. And then, same thing here, and the next one underneath it for consider establishing a statewide stewardship program. And then, sorry, jumped. Here, change DOH to city and state agencies. And again, here. So, I have a question just looking at this. Like, EPR was not an action that we recommended in the working group. So, I'm just wondering why it's listed as an action here. So, oh, this is TV. Never mind. Sorry. This just is all the, all of the <laughs> actions. It's just in a summary table. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Um, change this one also. And then I think the rest of the changes were just adding resilience office and then changing the wording. So again, I'll go back to the main text to make sure what we discussed and decided on is reflected here as well. Um, I had a maybe potential, wait, scroll up, wait, where was the um, reusable? I was thinking maybe we should try to incorporate um, Hawaii Convention Center and Blaisdell in that because I know when you're signing up for do, doing large events, they sometimes offer like um, green programs like that you can either pay towards to make your event um, carbon neutral. Um, but I wonder if it could become like a program through them to offer the reusable um, serviceware. Okay, so that, and that is the action here. No. Yeah, that one. So for a partner, sorry, who did you? Could you say that again? Who? Uh, Hawaii Convention Center. Thank you. Maybe, maybe Blaisdell. Could you say, I'm sorry, that I couldn't hear very well. I wonder if maybe include, you could include Blaisdell there too. I'm just trying to think of like places where they do large events that you could add. Yeah, HTA for any big, any big uh, tourism event kind of thing. Yeah. Could you put that in the, in the, time, in the chat? 
Yeah. I think she said white tourism authority. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that was not an accurate <laughs> These two. Um, all right. So then we added the resilience office to this one as well. Uh, changed out resilience office from this one and added the OH. And I think that represents the changes to that table. If I missed any that people are aware of, please, please let me know. Incentivize for donations. I'm not sure if, how we would do that. How DOH would do that, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, well, we could just put it to be determined as the owner. I don't know. Uh, who else? Well, it could just be city and state. Um, there. Yeah. I mean, you can do that through education, lots of ways, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay, we've got down to next steps and references, and I don't think there was any other comments in that. So I know there was a couple of comments in the chat, so we can circle back up to that. And I did, I did not see any comments to any of the appendix materials, so I'm going to assume there's no comments to that. Um, the only Things that will change are Appendix G, and those were the personal statements for testimony letters, and we're going to include the ones that we've received so far. Um, but I know that people were busy. I'm not sure if anyone was hoping to still include a letter that has not been able to, but if that is the case, perhaps the group could come up with a an option for allowing you to submit it within a week's time and then that would be included in the report. Is there any interest for opening that up and allowing folks that have not had a chance to put together a letter, maybe put one together in the next week? No? Yeah, it's a good idea. You would be interested in that, Quinn? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, because if someone missed it right. and just didn't have time, then what if they rather not? I don't know, is there anyone in that boat? I mean, we could we could leave it open and say that if you had if you wanted to submit a letter within a in a week, then if that's okay with the working group, then we could do that. Is anyone opposed to that? So speaking of the last uh, working group letter that I didn't read yet, um, brings us to the reuse Hawaii one. And as a member of the city and county source production working group, it is both a privilege and an honor to have contributed to the collaborative effort in addressing our community's pressing risk management challenges. With the impending closures of landfills within the next four years and the continuous rise in waste generation, our collective responsibility to foster a circular economy has never been more crucial. With the guidance of Jacobs, our working group has diligently invested time and effort into formulating proactive solutions to tackle this issue head on. Through extensive research, discussions, and brainstorming sessions, we have identified key areas where targeted interventions can make a significant difference in reducing waste and promoting sustainability across our city and county. The transition to a circular economy requires a multifaceted approach that encompasses waste reduction, reuse, recycling, and innovation in resource management. By implementing comprehensive strategies and fostering partnerships with stakeholders from both the public and private sectors, we can pave the way toward a more sustainable future for generations to come. Despite the challenges ahead, I remain optimistic about the opportunities that lie within our grasp with determination, dedication, and collective action, 
we can overcome obstacles and chart a course toward a more resilient and environmentally responsible community. As we move forward, I extend my commitment to supporting initiatives that promote source reduction and advance the principles of the circular economy. Whether through advocacy, education, or hands-on involvement, please consider me and my team every useful way, your greatest ally. And, uh, sorry, I'm getting very tongue-tied. <laughs> but thank you for the, the letter, Quinn. Very nice. And so those, I think... Thanks. Now heard the three yeah. letters that we received. If for some reason a letter skipped by me that I missed, please do let me know. But we will for sure include those three in Appendix G. All right. Well, then I will bring the slides back up because I think that brings us to our next agenda item. Emily, could we just shift them back to codes? Oh, thank you. Um, so the comment was adopt, not explore. All right, back to the CD section. Consider a diversion or deconstruction ordinance or statute. So I think what the thought was that we weren't sure exactly the mechanism that would be utilized, um, and that's why there was a suggestion potentially for the word consider. Um, the previous title was a little bit more affirmative action is to actually, you know, just decide on taking, adopting something. Yeah, I mean, I think and it leaves room for whatever that is, regulation and or deconstruction ordinance. And sorry to backtrack, I just thought about it more. And um, I, think, I think we, you know, in general, it's great documents, as much teeth as it has, the better. And I just, you know, I just think it's a important one. I'm also going to meet with Chair Waters pretty soon, and if it's okay with everyone, I wanted to um, let him know about that piece because he was interested in uh, helping shepherd uh, um, a city and county process to set that up. And I already had his team doing research on what other cities were doing and everything, so... So your recommendation, Quinn, is to leave it as adopt a diversion regulation and or deconstruction ordinance? Yes, please. Is anyone opposed to that? That sounds good to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back to the slides then, was that the only other comment, Emily, that we needed to peek at before we move on? Okay. All right, so that actually brings us to our next agenda item, which is a both information and an action. Um, it's related to the approval of the final report. So, first of all, did anyone sign up to make public comment on approval of this report? How about online? Eunice, was there any of the public that are there in attendance that would like to make public comment about approval of the final report? And no members of the public. Okay, so since there are no members of the public, 
uh, that wish to have public testimony, then um, we will not have any, and we will move on to actual um, to discussing this with our source reduction working group members. Um, so, we just went through quite an extensive discussion about all of the different changes. Um, we've all had an opportunity to review the draft report and submit your comments. And we've gone through each of those and come to some resolution on specific changes to make and or some specific a little additional research that might be needed to add a little more context. So we will take all of that feedback make all of those changes as discussed today and documented both in the recording and in our notes and also on the file. Um, so if I would like to ask if there is someone that would like to make a motion to approve the final source reduction working group report with the changes as discussed today. And I move. Thank you. <laughs> that we vote on the approval of the final report that will include the revisions discussed today and include individual letters as discussed today. Is there someone to second that motion? Uh, I'll second that motion, Lauren Zerbel. All right, all members in favor of approving, approving the Source Reduction Working Group final report with the revisions discussed today and the individual letters as discussed today say aye. 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 Quinn, Quinn Pans is up. Amy and Nicole. Sorry, I was just registering my eye with the hand. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, same. So do we, All right. can you read? So eyes, on, eyes online are Quinn, Nicole, um, Lauren, and I thought there was one more. Amy, hey, back. So that's four online, and then in the room, we have approval, we said Mike. Yes, okay. sorry. So that's five people. And that is a quorum, because we have nine, so. Let the record show then we have five yes votes and um, the final report will be approved with the changes as discussed today and the letters as discussed today. All right, so again, this is the, the final Source Reduction Working Group meeting. And following this meeting, our team is going to post the final meeting for notes and the slides from today. Um, we'll also post the recording and the draft notes for meeting five and the final report as revised. And um, that will include the official proceedings of this working group. However, as discussed in the report, there's much work to continue. And our hope is that you all will help to continue moving these source reduction working group efforts forward. So we want to thank everyone for the participation in this working group. We also have some nice certificates that Brian is going to present to the group. Um, for those that are not present, we'll have to find a way to get them to you. But again, I just want to thank all of you so much for all of your participation and the great time and energy that you put into this. And I've, I've had a pleasure being a part of the process. So thank you very much. Yeah, and then, thank um, you. I get, oh, where do I stand? You can stand. I think, can you all see Brian? Where am I? Here, you can come, come over here. Um, yeah, again, um, I'd also like to uh, add my appreciation to each and every one of you. I know you spent a lot of time on this, and, and I mean, especially looking at the final report, um, it's very, uh, very detailed and has a lot of input from uh, from all of the members and, and I appreciate and impressed with um, the time and uh, the, that you put into this. Um, I think it's going to really make a difference and, and it gives a really uh, a footprint uh, for us to follow going forward. And so um, thank you Ben for being in person at, at all the meetings. Um, I'd also like to uh, add a special appreciation to Lindsay for being such a great moderator throughout the process as well as uh, John and Emily from Jacobs for their uh, extensive support 
and running and moderating this group. Um, I also like to recognize Julie and Yana um, from our Air Force Division Planning Branch for um, a lot of her coordination efforts and making this happen. So there's a lot of work that went on behind the scenes, a lot of work went um, during the meetings, and um, I, I think um, it, every, everything that all of your input does make a difference, and I look forward to seeing how that affects uh, the future going forward in this community, uh, both in the both for this county and and how we interact with the statewide other counties and here in. All right. Well, thank you. They're really nice certificates for those of you that can't see them yet, but you will get a chance to get to see them shortly. Okay, so I have. Let's see. Where do we have? <laughs> it's probably the last two. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll just read them off as I read the name. So to recognize all of the members, Haley Cook. Lene, oh here, Lene. <laughs> Lene. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Leona. Here, Michael Key. And then we also have Alan Evans. Nicole Chatterson. Amy Brinker. Wind Biddo, Tina Yamaki, and Lawrence Herbal. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Well, with that, uh, we can officially adjourn meeting number five. And again, thank you all so much. Mahalo, and hope to see you all soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take all of care. that.